Okay, I'm gonna be brutally honest right now. If you're expecting to see ridiculous AoE damage like what Demi Esther is able to output, you will be very disappointed. In fact, you should be ashamed of yourself for even comparing a damage unit to a standard unit. That's like comparing a Honda to a Lambo. But what am I talking about exactly? Well, in this video, I'm about to break down Epsilon, how she functions, and what set I think works best for her. And guess what? I'll even show you how I personally have Epsilon built right at the end as a reward, so make sure you keep watching. Rarely do you find a YouTuber who is a real G dropping gems for you, so do yourself a favor. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smack that noti bell so you don't miss any videos I release. They're all good shit. You got some explaining to do! So who is Epsilon? Well, Epsilon is an automaton introduced to us as a dark bruiser who is able to manipulate your opponent's AP and a barrier punisher. The end. Let's go over Epsilon skills real quick. Every skill of hers has this clause stating that her damage increases when the target has a barrier. In case you were wondering, that is a 70% multiplier. Her S1 hits two enemies and increases her accuracy for one turn, which is great because it helps her land her damage more consistently and helps you fight evasion much better because I'ma be real, evasion is still incredibly strong post nerf. Her S2 and S3 are both AoE attacks, with her S2 reducing 40 AP from all enemies and if you burst this skill, which is extremely easy to do, you will also strip 2 buffs from them. Then we have the S3. The S3 is a very simple AoE damage dealer that generates her a ridiculous 35 AP per target damage and grants her invulnerability for 1 turn. Using this skill basically guarantees you a burst 3 S2 the second you wrap around the priority bar. That's pretty cool in my opinion. It's almost as if a kamikaze robot is about to explode on your ass when she gets a turn and your opponent is just sitting there, sweating bullets, trying to figure out what to do to protect themselves from that explosion. What else? The reason you don't see Epsilon showcase or talk highly is because of two main reasons. Let's start with the biggest one. As per usual, People tend to forget that her subclass is a bruiser subclass, which means Epsilon has lesser base attack, but that is made up by a higher base defense and health. If you're using other bruisers as a comparison, like Rona or Demi Stella, then you're forgetting about the HP scaling alongside their attack scaling in their damage, and you're once again comparing a damage unit to a standard unit. Meanwhile, Epsilon's damage is strictly attack based, and her multiplier improves by your opponent having a barrier which is actually very common in Arena in case you weren't aware. Think Demi Stella, Force Field Generator holders like Demi Drakan, Veronica, Han Bu Lee, and Iron Messiah holders like Mayne. The Curse of Bruiser simply refers to the disgustingly low base speed. And yes, she does suffer from it because of her subclass. But have you read her exclusive equipment? Basically, if your opponent AoEs, Epsilon gets a 50% priority push. 50% priority is a ridiculous amount to get for free. That basically is the same as Demi Esther's revive priority push before they buffed it to 80% and we know how annoying it is when all of a sudden Demi Esther cuts the turn and nicks you to die kingdom come. Well, that is true for the likes of Epsilon, but the difference here is that she gets to do this every turn for as long as she is alive. Remember, she is a bruiser, so you're building her tanky enough to take a beating and survive. Chances of you dying from a hit or two is unlikely, so your opponent needs to think twice before committing every AoE attack on her because she could very easily turn that fuck up on them and ruin their career. So how do you properly utilize Epsilon? Well, it's quite simple, isn't it? No? I thought so. That's why you're watching this video so I can impart my infinite wisdom onto you. And if you want more infos like this, join my Discord server link in the description down below. These info bombs I give you are basically a culmination of discussions within my server which I'm letting everyone witness and learn from some of the best players in the game. And with RTA incoming, you'll want to get in because I'm about to make these discussions exclusive. So get in there, chat with us before it's too late. But I digress. Anyway, here is the proper way to fully utilize Epsilon. Now, we know that Epsilon is pretty much a barrier punisher, priority cheater, and a bruiser. So naturally, you want to use her whenever you see a lot of AoE and a lot of shield abusers. Very quickly, D Stella will always burst her S1 to put up a shield, and her team will start with a shield if she is 6 star. Veronica consistently puts up a shield on the lowest health unit in the team. Demi Drakan S2 is an AoE shield. Leo's S2 is a team shield. Do I need to go on? Good, I'll move on. So, 
There are two ways I can see you utilize Epsilon. Because of Epsilon's pure attack scaling, you could possibly run her as a cleave unit where her role is to soften the enemy's team who has barrier up and make way for your main cleaver to put maximum damage on your opponent. Or your other option is to play her like an actual bruiser and make her able to tank hits and not die to a 2 or 3 tap. What you want to achieve with this style is to gain the accuracy buff from Epsilon's S1, wrap around with the help of her EE and explode on your opponent. This build also gives you the opportunity to control your opponent's AP gain which if you think about it, indirectly makes your team a whole lot tankier. Think about it, how many units in this game rely on their burst to do significant tempo swings and win the war of attrition? Mane's burst 3 S1 literally makes her and her team incredibly durable, Demi Este and Demi Drakan's burst 3 S1 resets their cooldown, Tamara's burst 3 S2 grants her an extra turn, Valentine's burst 2 and 3 grants dual attack. Now take that all away. What significant momentum can these units do without them? Absolutely nothing. With those two styles in mind, let me tell you my personal choice to play Epsilon. See, I come from a long line of competitive games, and with that amount of exposure comes unmatched perspicacity. And so, I personally run Epsilon like the bruiser she is meant to be. Putting her on counter attack set means that you get the chance to do damage outside of your turn and gain that accuracy buff. What that does for you is it opens up options. Do you S3? Do you hold an S1? Then wrap around and then do your S3 when they have a barrier? Decisions? Decisions. And those decisions, I'll leave it up to you. But as promised, this is what my Epsilon looks like. Remember, she's a bruiser so she has very respectable base HP and defense which makes her very easy to build her tanky without sacrificing a whole lot of damage stats. You want to aim for about 12k HP and about 2k defense and then dump the rest towards attack, crit and crit damage. Any residue speed stuff is welcome on her. After all, you don't want to be so slow that she cannot ever take her turn when you finally decide to pop that S3 and gain that invulnerability buff. But look, I get why a lot of people won't attempt this. Everyone enjoys the adrenaline rush that cleaves gives you and somehow it makes you feel like you have a big PP flex when you're able to cleave a team. Trust me. It's more satisfying to watch your opponent try so hard to kill you only to realize it's doomed. They can throw every bullet towards you and you just stand there unfazed. 